Hello and welcome to a new SimScale tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can set up a linear static analysis of a crane. So what are you going to learn besides that? I will also show you how you can assign boundary conditions, material and other properties to the simulation. And for meshing, we use the so-called standard meshing algorithm for our geometry. The standard SimScale workflow looks as follows. Usually in the first step, we prepare our CAD model for the simulation. However, this is not needed in this tutorial, so we can skip this step. In the second step, we set up the simulation. That means we set up boundary conditions and any other parameters that are needed for the simulation. And in the third step, right before we run the simulation, we will create the mesh. This is very simple. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial in particular, I will open up a new thread in the forum where you can ask your questions. If you like, you can also post your questions under the video. And side note, make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest SimScale tutorials. So without further ado, let's now jump into the workbench and let's get started with the tutorial. So we are here now in the workbench and this is our CAD model we want to work with. If you don't see this information window right away, what you have to do is to click on geometries and select your geometry that you want to simulate, click on it and then go to create simulation to create a new simulation. As I mentioned, we will go with a structural static analysis in this case. We choose it and create a simulation. This opens a new tree and as you can see, there are several informations given or options that you can adapt. For example, geometry, there you can see all the available geometries. In this case, we only have one. You also have contacts available, but this is not needed in this tutorial and we do not touch element technology as well. And of course, we have to adapt the model. We give it a magnitude of 9.81 and we said that the direction is EY, so a negative Y direction, because as you can see in the cube here, the Y direction shows up and assuming that this is already the right orientation of our crane, gravity is acting downwards, so we have to assign a minus one to it, which is the unit vector which shows just right in the opposite direction as the y coordinate of this cube here. What we have to do is also to assign a material, so we click on material and have a variety of options right here. We choose steel, and you can basically select any material you want if you need other properties then given right here, you click apply. And once you've selected the material, you can adapt, for example, the Young's modulus for source ratio or the density. But as for now, we are happy with that. We say, okay. And now we go to boundary conditions. And what we have to do is we have to fix the three rear faces. So we assign a fixed support to it. We select the faces. So here we go with a fixed support. This is fine. And last but not least, we have to assign a force which acts on this face right here. Also a negative y direction, minus 550 kilonewton, which is minus 5e to the power of 5 newtons. Perfect. And basically we're good to go. We don't touch the numerics in simulation control. If you want, you can add a result control item, but that's not needed for our case. For the mesh, you go with a standard meshing algorithm, as I said. You go with the sizing of automatic, finest of five, and you activate second order element mesh. If you want to know more about second order elements, there's an excellent post inside of our forum about second order elements, but also blog posts, which explains it in a bit more detail what this actually means. For this tutorial, I've already prepared the mesh and you can see the result right here, which looks quite good for a first step. Of course, for a finite element analysis, we would have to do a convergence study but we are not going to do this in this tutorial. But for first run, a finest of five should be fine. The last step, of course, is because you see a red circle here, is that we have to, of course, start a simulation run. So we click on plus and you can name the simulation as you want, but of course, give it a meaningful name. For example, mesh course, and then maybe level five or something like that. And then you can basically click on start. However, I've already prepared the results for you. So we go to post process results right here. We could have a look at the von Mises stress, which is quite a good indicator on where the high stresses are or occur. So we go, can go to von Mises stress. There we can see that the high von Mises stress is basically here in this area. A nice trick that I want to show you for this tutorial is if we go to displacement, activate the displacement, then we go to results to the displacement 
And then we can see basically, if we scale it up to 100x, how the structure behaves. And this is actually a good sanity check because we applied our force here. We wanted it to pull the structure down, which is actually the case as you can see, because it slightly bends downwards. If it would bend upwards, for example, then we would know, oh, we probably made some mistakes in the boundary conditions and we would have to go back and adapt it and then rerun the simulation. So this is a very cool sanity check that I wanted to show you. That's it for this quick tutorial. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, as I mentioned, feel free to reach out to us via the forum, post your question under the video. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest SimScale tutorials. And of course, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye. Thank you.